Last year, the U.S. Air Force very publicly canceled what was to be America's first operational hypersonic missile, the AGM-183A Arrow. Now, this cancellation came after a slew of high-profile and very embarrassing testing failures, many of which were not actually associated with the weapon system so much as its supporting hardware and software. But now, a new report published by the offices of the Director of Operational Testing and Evaluation suggests that the rumors of Arrow's demise may have been greatly exaggerated. So let's talk about America's air-launched rapid response weapon and whether or not it's got a future. Preliminary design work on the Arrow started back in April of 2018, only about a month after Russian President Vladimir Putin gave a speech announcing the first modern hypersonic weapons were being put into service. Of course, one of those weapons, Kinzel, we would later learn, was nothing more than an air-launched ballistic missile. But the other, Avant-Garde, may yet prove to be the real deal. Nonetheless, this news rippled through the Defense Department, prompting the DoD to kick off a variety of developmental efforts meant to match or counter this capability. And today, there are no fewer than 70 developmental hypersonic Sonic weapons or aircraft programs drawing funds from Pentagon coffers. But Arrow was a bit of a special case. It was building off of previous developmental efforts, and as a result, both Lockheed Martin and the U.S. military believed they could field this missile in an operational capacity extremely quickly. In fact, they had a target operational service date of just four years later in 2022, despite this weapon being intended to do things no American missile ever had before. Now, it's important to understand that missiles have been traveling at hypersonic speeds for more than a half century now. In fact, they have since the very inception of ballistic missiles with Germany's V-2 rocket. What differentiates modern hypersonic weapons from those fast-moving missiles is the ability to maneuver at those sustained high speeds, making them much more difficult to intercept than the far more predictable ballistic warheads we are accustomed to seeing. Now, there are two classes of modern hypersonic Hypersonic weapons, hypersonic cruise missiles like the HACM in development with the Air Force today, and hypersonic glide vehicles like Russia's Avant-Garde, China's DFZF, and America's AGM-183 Arrow. Now, hypersonic glide vehicles, or HGVs, could really be thought of as an extension of ballistic missile technology. They're carried aloft via a conventional rocket booster, but separate from that booster at a lower altitude than the warhead from a ballistic missile might. Once separated, that glide vehicle travels unpowered but at extremely high speeds, potentially as high as Mach 20 or better, down toward its target while maneuvering using control surfaces, chemical thrusters, or maybe a combination of the two. Now, every maneuver will reduce the overall speed of the weapon, but if planned properly, these maneuvers can render the calculations that air defense systems use to calculate an intercept effectively moot. And by the time you can recalculate a new intercept, that high-speed missile will have already closed with its target. At least, that's the plan. Now, Russia's avant-garde is a ground-launched weapon carried aloft by their RS-28 Sarmat ICBM, and China's DFZF is also a ground-launched weapon that's carried aloft by their DF-17 intermediate-range ballistic missile. But Aero was meant to be an air-launched hypersonic glide vehicle instead, tested aboard B-52s, but ultimately meant to be carried by B-52s, B-1B Lancers, and F-15E Strike Eagles. But as you might imagine, when rushing development on such an advanced system, Arrow ran into trouble pretty early on. Now, testing on this weapon began in 2021, and between 2021 and early 2023, seven total tests produced four failures and only three successes. Now, of those four failures, three were not really associated with the missile itself, and instead were all about its associating hardware, things like its ability to separate from the aircraft upon launch. This is stuff that you'd expect Lockheed Martin and the U.S. Air Force to have on lock by now. And in fact, when the missile did manage to actually separate and fire, it functioned pretty well in testing, racking up three successes, which is actually more successful tests than Russia's avant-garde has had to date. But there were problems with those successful tests as well, as we learned from this recent report. First and foremost, a lack of hypersonic testing infrastructure significantly hindered progress on Arrow. And to be honest, 
hinders progress on all the rest of the hypersonic efforts in development as well. But the problem was really exacerbated with Arrow because of how quickly they were trying to rush it into service. There are just very few flight corridors within the United States that can support the testing of a weapon with a 1,000 mile range and a top speed in excess of Mach 5. And as a result, it looks as though those successful tests were actually carried out over the open ocean, where, yes, they were able to gather vital information about its ability to separate from the booster and travel unpowered at hypersonic speeds, but they couldn't really effectively assess its accuracy or how effective the warhead was when it's just being dumped in the ocean. And on one of the successful tests that did take place over a land-based range, the range sensors went down, so they weren't able to gather that data then either. Now this wouldn't be that big of a deal if you could just gear up and test again the next day or week or even month, but with so many programs competing for the limited time and space available in these test ranges, that just wasn't possible for Arrow. So after the program's fourth failure in early 2023, the Air Force effectively washed their hands of it, saying that they would complete its testing regime as scheduled, but they had no intentions of putting the weapon into production thereafter, placing their focus instead on the hypersonic attack cruise missile, a scramjet-powered HCM. And that brings us to this most recent report, published in January by the offices of the Director of Operational Testing and Evaluation, which not only outlined the struggles Arrow experienced in testing, but also pointed to another upcoming test of Arrow, and this very interesting statement that I'll quote directly. The Air Force will use the all-up round flight test results to inform their production decision upon the conclusion of the current test series. Now that suggests that Arrow is not as dead as it's perceived to be, and in fact, may even still have a path to production and service provided it performs well in this last upcoming test. So, of course, I reached out to the folks I know at Lockheed Martin to see if I could get them to spill the beans. And not much of a surprise here, they gave me back a statement that certainly leaves the door open for Arrow to enter production, but doesn't really say anything concrete either. I'll read it to you here. Lockheed Martin continues to partner with the U.S. Air Force to further validate the capabilities of the Aero system, and stands ready to quickly deliver crucial hypersonic strike capability through our established production line. The recent Aero flight test demonstrates our confidence in the weapon and its capabilities. Now that admittedly doesn't tell us much, but Lockheed Martin is saying that they're confident in the weapon and its capabilities could be seen as pointing to the fact that its demise has been greatly exaggerated. And that catches us right up to where Arrow stands today. And it'll be awfully interesting to see what happens after Arrow's next, and as far as we know, final flight test, and any subsequent announcements that may follow. <laughs>